Good morning. Um, okay, I was meant to give everyone five minutes to filter in, but I guess the sooner I start, the sooner you can get to the front of the lunch queue. So uh, that will make me a popular presenter. Okay, so um, at an event called the Future of Cybersecurity, you could be forgiven for wondering what we're talking about bots for. Bots have been around for years. Surely there's more innovative things to talk about in a cyber show. But um, I think uh, what we've seen in the last 18 months in particular is such a rise in the sophistication of attacks using bots that even if you think you've got this covered, a fresh perspective, a fresh look at this problem should be, uh, should be taken. And in the next sort of 15, 20 minutes, I hope to shine a spotlight on exactly that and just at least get you to reconsider. I work for Netasea. Um, we're not going to go into a demo or pitch. We'd love to do that, but we can do that at lunch if you'd like to. So it was actually 2016, which was the first year where automated traffic or bot traffic overtook human traffic on the internet. And of course, there's plenty of good bots out there. Uh, Google uh, is, a, is a bot of a type, and there's RPA on the rise. But actually, uh, um, bad bots account for roughly 29% of all of internet traffic. And you can see on the bottom right just some of the things and some of the scale that they've been involved with. Um, Aha, the obligatory ble uh, breach slide. No cyber presentation is complete without one. Um, what I wanted to point out here is that um, this is just a cross-section of some of the breaches, well-publicized breaches that took place towards the end of last year. Um, but what I wanted to point out is that what they have in common is that all of these breaches are now your problem. And when I mean you, I mean you as individuals and you, the company you represent. If I can just explain. So... I'll use myself as an example. I have a Marriott Hotel Starwood Alliance card. I have a BA loyalty card. I have a Twitter account. I have an Uber account. I have a Facebook account. I have a MyFitnessPal account, although I don't log into that one as often as I should. Um, I have many of these. Um, the way in which I access all these accounts is exactly the same. I use a username, which is typically my personal email address, and a password. And because I work in security like you, it's a strong password with many characters and, and uh, different uppercase and lowercase, except it doesn't matter how strong the password is because it's been stolen. Um, now, I'm embarrassed to admit this in front of a room full of security professionals, but uh, I use that same username and password across approximately 50 other personal logins. Um, now, you all don't do that. You all use LastPass or Dashlane. None of you do that. There's a few laughs at the front. But um, uh, unfortunately, the cross-section of the population is 99 point something percent of people will expect you to solve this for them. They won't use those technologies. They will reuse passwords. And so this is now very much your company's problem as well as your own personal problem. Um, in January, Troy Hunt, and I'm sure many of you are aware of who Troy Hunt is, he, he said he'd found 770 million matching username and passwords on popular hacking forums. 770 million. Worryingly, on the bottom left, he said 140 million of those he'd never seen before. Um, so the problem is just getting worse. If my username and password wasn't already compromised, the probability of it getting compromised is just growing by the day, by the week. Um, something has to be done. Now, uh, by the way, if you're not aware of Troy's, uh, Troy's this, is, this is the website. I'd, re I'd, I'd really recommend it. It's great independent uh, advice and uh, research. Um, now, the basic laws of supply and demand say that if something's in large supply, and 770 million is quite a large supply, the price is only going to come down, and that's exactly what's been happening. The ease of obtaining stolen legitimate credentials has become its, its pence or cents, um, and that's exactly what's happening. When you combine that with the ease of, of using off-the-shelf bots and off-the-shelf tools, which I'll come on to, you can see why this has become such a mainstream attack. This type of attack is, is called credential stuffing. Troy, Troy mentions it. It's not one of his terms. It's an industry term. In other words, people take lists like these and then, um, and then attempt to see where else they work. Okay. Now, the formula behind credential stuffing attacks is very simple. You basically take some credentials, you stuff them into a bot, 
and you try logging into a website. And then the financial gain is not always obvious. If it's a bank account, obviously there's a very, but actually the different use cases, the different things people are trying to access is, uh, is, is always surprising to us. What I would say is that um, you probably can't see this at the bottom, but nine out of, a ten, nine out of, nine out of ten login attempts are not human. That's the register. They're actually referring to e-commerce there, which is maybe the, one of the most heavily affected industries we see. But actually, we see it across vertical as well, that more and more login attempts on anything publicly facing is now not human. So how easy is it to get these credentials? Surely this is the domain of the dark web experts. Well, a simple Google search, OK? So let's see if this works. I've typed in, check my dump. OK, it's a very it's a very common thing I, I type in. It takes me to a Twitter feed, a Twitter feed which refreshes every hour and it just publishes uh, lists of credentials. OK, uh, lists of usernames, passwords. This, of course, is the tip of the iceberg. Um, this is this is just a sample set of data to try and tempt you in to buy more of it. But if you do buy it, it is very, very cheap. Uh, and this gets refreshed very commonly. Now, if Check My Dump is not a website you go to very often, then it's just a normal Google search of combo lists. Combo lists meaning username and passwords. You type in combo lists, the first thing that comes up is a YouTube video of how to obtain good combo lists. And there are thousands of these out there. It's become a mainstream attack. Now, if getting credentials is easy, as I said earlier, the getting off-the-shelf tools, off-the-shelf bots now to load them into is the way to do this at scale. If you, if you went onto uh, one of these websites and just got a couple of credentials, it's very manual to type it in, so of course you need a tool. There's Sentry MBA, there's Storm, the one I'm showing you here is Sniper. Again, these are not dark web tools. These are just ready, ready uh, you know, normal web access. And whilst it calls itself account recovery, you probably can't read this, but... It says credential stuffing here. I can't see that myself there. But straight away, they, they are acknowledging it's a credential stuffing tool. Um, by the way, this is, this is very sophisticated. They have, they have exceptional support. They have a great modern UI. This is mainstream technology. This is not something which is uh, some script kiddies written. This is big, big business for them. And talking about big business, there's many of these websites. Parade Shop is just one of them where you can buy Spotify accounts, you can buy Fortnite accounts, uh, you can buy Dunkin' Donut accounts or Starbucks accounts. $1.80 will get you a $10 gift card at Starbucks, at, uh, Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts. Okay, this is big business, and these are all stolen credentials, stolen accounts. Now, this is an emerging threat, which is why we're presenting it at the future of cyber, okay? It's a re-emerging threat, the bot, uh, the bot threat. Uh, there's, there's, there's some, there's some uh, good literature out there. I spoke to 451 just last week as well about this. And I think what's, what's certain is that in 2019, you'll see a lot more third-party analysis or commentary on this. So hopefully you'll get ahead of the game because it's coming. So what are they after? Um, bots, has, but we focused on credential stuffing mainly, okay? But actually bots do, do many, many things. Um, but uh, credential stuffing and account takeover is really just one of the things they do. Um, this slide doesn't really do justice to all the use cases we see across companies, but, but it's, a, it's a sample set at least. Um, if I pick on one sector, the gaming and gambling uh, industry, we work, we work a lot with them. When we first started working with them two and a half years ago, we assumed that credential stuffing or account takeover was what they were after. After all, a gambling account acts as a mini bank account almost. You keep a surplus in there. And true enough, bots were trying to log in with username and passwords and trying to uh, exfiltrate money. However, it was far worse than that. We actually found fake, cre fake account creation to be a major issue for them. Um, you've, you've seen the adverts, open up a free Paddy Power account and get a free £20 bet. Bots were opening up thousands of accounts, having bets, cleaning the accounts out. Automated betting with, with uh, bots is very common. Um, bots were also scraping odds. Scraping is a very common use case, sometimes used for the good, some, many times used for the, for, for the wrong. 
but scraping odds and then re-advertising that they can guarantee to beat uh, Bet365 odds if you come to this website. Um, if you also have enough control of enough of these betting accounts, you can start to move markets, you can start to move odds in your favour. Uh, on top of that, uh, they also found that such was the um, volume of bots crawling all over their websites that they were just serving up an enormous amount of uh, uh, cloud infrastructure to service bots that they didn't want near their website in the first place. Um, one gambling company bought our solution purely on cloud cost savings alone. It's not how we market our solution. We like to go as a cyber company, but it's just a cost saving exercise on infrastructure, getting rid of traffic that shouldn't be there. And the final one, skewed analytics. If you take gambling companies and they are huge marketeers, they, they base all of their marketing budget on the website data they see, the website data they couldn't trust because it was skewed so heavily by non-human traffic. So the intent is not always obvious. Credential stuffing, account takeover is the obvious one, but there are so many things that bots are doing, and we love to speculate with different, different sectors on what bots are or might be trying to do, and so that's a great conversation to start if you don't know. So there's a question. Why aren't organizations stopping these attacks? Well, many believe they are, but I'd say 80 to 90% of our pipeline at the moment is companies that thought they had this issue solved and then they f were still getting hit. Hence the reason I started off with, hopefully this whets the appetite to take a fresh look at it. Not the best looking slide, but um, the reason people aren't stopping this is that they're trusting their legacy tools. So when it first comes, it can actually look like a DDoS attack. So they turn to their DDoS provider and ask them to solve it. Uh, and the DDoS provider is often bundled in with a WAF or a CDN or something like that. Um, they then quickly point out that they don't have, it's not a DDoS problem, but the good news is they have another bot, bot management plugin tool which can solve the problem because you have a bot problem. So people very much default to buying a WAF or a CDN, or a bundled solution from another security provider. And a lot, of their a lot of their techniques and tools rely on capture or IP whitelisting, reputation analysis, rules base, are very complex, but actually the bots are just dancing around these. These were, these were solving what I'd call the generation one. What we actually advocate is that many people do switch on these bundled, bundled solutions because it does eradicate a lot of the noise that bots are causing but it doesn't stop the more sophisticated attacks. It doesn't solve the problem. And like I said, most of our pipeline is people that have tried the CDN or WAF, and they've got all the reports of the bots they're stopping, but then we shine a light on the bots they weren't stopping. So when they've realized that CDNs and WAFs weren't really cutting it, they turn to a best of breed model. They turn to a dedicated bot management solution. And there's a few out there on the market. What nearly all of them have in common is a massive over-reliance on JavaScript and digital finger, uh, fingerprinting. Uh, this is a good tool set. It's, they are useful signals, but there's too much of an over-reliance on it. Now, again, you're security professionals. Therefore, many of you will not want any third-party JavaScript near, near your website. Or, or those of you that do want it, want it limited. Um, what we found is that no matter how well obfuscated some of these tools make their JavaScript, it can be cached, it can be reverse engineered, and therefore it can be bypassed, which is why many of you don't like JavaScript. Now, just to be clear, our solution uses reputation analysis. We have an elements of JavaScript, but really we're not overly reliant on it because we've just seen it be bypassed too easily. Back to, the, uh, back to Charles' presentation, we've pen tested our solution. We've tried to bypass our own solution. We've tried to bypass others. And again, these legacy techniques, which have been very, very good at stopping bots in the past, are almost rendered useless nowadays. Um, now, this is, this is quite worrying, because what we're seeing is the most sophisticated account takeover, the most sophisticated bots are, um, are now adapting in real time. So what we found is that if we block bots, because we see it's, uh, it's obviously trying to mimic human behavior, it's maybe putting in some fake mouse trails, very human-like mouse trails. But if we block it, it will, just, uh, it will just mutate, rotate IP address, and come back in real time and just keep, it's just whack-a-mole. So 
a different, a, a different solution has had to be had here. Um, there's different, there's different mitigation techniques other than blocking, but actually what we found is that a combination of behavioral analysis and machine learning has to be adopted because that's what uh, the attackers are using. They're using the AI techniques. It's been well documented this morning. Um, and while Charles mentioned there are some drawbacks in using ML in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a security um, uh, uh, security defense, we actually find it to be the, the most effective of all the different tool sets and techniques we've used, we found that in stopping bots, this is, this is the only way to go. Now, many are start, starting to add this in. You'll find that some of the WAFs are saying they now have behavioral analysis. It's very much an afterthought. It's very much an add-on. Don't believe the marketing hype is probably one thing I'd say. And they really can't wean themselves off rules-based or JavaScript approaches. Um, so what is our approach? Well, I promised you I wouldn't dive into a pitch. And uh, I promised you I'd get you to lunch. So I'm going to take one minute rather than five minutes I have left. You'll be in the front of the queue as promised. But the answer is to take a different mindset, to take a different approach. Um, it's true that some of the uh, other approaches have their place. In fact, security should always be a multi-layered approach. Um, but at the heart of it, it has to be machine learning and behavioral um, science. Um, we have, um, we have a team of uh, R&D and data science, all, all based in Manchester. We have general purpose models and algorithms trained across different verticals, looking for different attack techniques across the verticals. And they can be tuned and customized towards each individual customer's risk appetites. You all have different, different good bots within your environment, so you may want us to fine tune that so as not to block legitimate bot traffic as well. Um, but using behavioral analysis and machine learning alongside the other, the other signals is the only way that we've been able to consistently stop this for very large enterprises across Europe and America now, more recently. So I hope that's whet your appetite. Um, if you're concerned about what bots might be doing on your publicly facing web infrastructure, we'd love to speak to you. If you have any login page, customer facing login page, you really have to come and speak to us because even if you think you've got that sorted out, will very quickly shine a light on the fact that it's under constant attack and you have to do something about it. But thanks for your time. Form an orderly queue. Go and get lunch. <laughs>